Hi guys and welcome to the show. Today we have Alpine's new ILX W650 Apple CarPlay Android Auto short chassis radio. Let's open it up and take a look inside. So inside the box, you get some paper, you get a thank you for choosing Alpine, you get an Alpine business card that tells you to go here in order to get the real owner's manual, and then of course you get the quick start guide that'll walk you through pretty much all the things you need to know about the radio. Next, you get a bag with a bunch of cables in them. Let's take those out and take a look at them. First thing you get is four screws. Now Alpine uses a fine thread screw, not a coarse thread screw. So the screws that come with kits and stuff like that, you're gonna wanna make sure you use these. These are a little different. The next bag is gonna have all your RCA interconnects for the radio. Now this radio has a four volt, six channel preamp output. On here you have purple is rear, gray is front, and way down here on the bottom is blue, which is subwoofer. And they're staggered so that they'll fit in the dash a little bit easier. Now over here you have your rear view camera input as well as your front view camera input. And this of course is gonna plug into the back of the radio, which we'll show you in a few minutes. Next is going to be your one and only USB cable. Now the cable is 42 inches long and what's unique about it is it has this right angle where it plugs into the back of the radio. Lastly is going to be the power harness. Now Alpine's power harness is a little bit different than everyone else's so we'll go ahead and point out those features here real quick. You're going to have your standard four colors here for speaker. You have your white pair which is driver's front, your gray pair passenger front, your green pair is driver's rear, and your purple pair is passenger rear. Next up you're going to have two blue wires. Blue Blue with a white stripe and blue. Blue with a white stripe is gonna be your amplifier turn on. Blue is gonna be your amplified antenna turn on. You have your standard red accessory wire, your standard yellow power wire, black is ground, and then you have these two guys here that are excessively long. This is where they're different than everyone else. Alpine uses the orange white wire, which is commonly illumination for reverse trigger. So do not hook this up to illumination. This is your reverse trigger for your backup camera. Camera. Then they have this yellow blue, which is your emergency brake trigger. Now the emergency brake trigger does need to get hooked up. Every time the key is cycled, it needs to see on, off, on in order for you to access the menus in the radio that are locked out when you do not have the emergency brake on. Next is the Bluetooth mic. Now this is a little bit different Bluetooth mic than Alpine has used before. It comes with this metal mounting slip here, and then this is the microphone. So they attach like this, and we'll get put up on your headliner. Now the radio does not come in any type of foam, it comes in this cool balloon pack, which Alpine has been using these for a couple years now. The radio is well protected, comes in a bag, which then has foam, and then on the screen itself, there is a, as you can see here, like a plastic that covers it up to keep it from getting scratched because it's a capacitive touch and not a clear resistive. So this is the nicer screen. Looking at the radio right away, you can see this is a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. It's called a short chassis radio. Now the dimensions of this radio are seven inches across by four inches by two and six sixteenths. The other thing that's unique about this radio, you'll notice right here this. This radio protrudes out 5 sixteenths and the reason why that's important is because most radios have gone to a simple little maybe 3 30 seconds, sixteenths of an inch, sometimes even a 30 seconds of an inch, almost no lip which makes mounting in a dash kit very difficult. This one's not going to have that issue. Now here on the radio itself is also a description of what all the wires do and where they're pinned out in the radio itself. So if you didn't remember what I just told you, it's right here. You don't have to go dig through the owner's manual to find it. However, if you do need to, if you turn to page 13, there's a full blowout of what everything on the back of this radio does located here. Let's go ahead and get this thing set up and we'll take a look at the back of the radio. Now located on the back of the radio, you have this big silver back panel here. One thing to note about this is this is actually the heat sink for the radio. So this will get hot. It's okay because it is a shallow radio. So it's not like it's gonna be going deep into the dash. They made the whole back panel instead of like most radios we just have this small section in the center the heat sink so that they could get it even thinner they don't have this giant heat sink sticking out starting over
over here, you have the microphone input clearly indicated because it is red, which next to it is the wired remote input. So red is for mic, black is for the wired remote input. That's so that you can retain your steering wheel controls. Now you will need an add-on module to do that. You have a wired antenna adapter. This has FM and AM only. Over here though, if you'd like to add the Sirius XM SVX 300 tuner, you can. Down here is the power plug. This is the camera preamp output plug here that just simply plugs in like that. And then your USB, this is the strange part. It does not plug in this way like you would assume. It actually plugs in upside down like this and we'll have to loop around the radio like so. Now let's go ahead and power it up and take a look at the features. All right, so when the radio first powers up, you get this beautiful Alpine display. You cannot change it. Next thing it's gonna ask you is which language you'd like to choose. You have four to choose from. English, French, Spanish, or Portuguese. Pick one and select OK. And then it automatically takes you to your AM FM display display screen. Across the top you have three sets of FM, six presets all together, as well as one AM with six presets as well. You have a six indicator here and a six indicator here. They'll both take you to the same place. This is your home page where all your features are gonna be listed. First up, just like it powered up to, is FM AM. You can scan here by hitting your up and down or simply swipe with two fingers across back and forth and it'll take it to the next preset. You can swipe anywhere on the radio, it doesn't matter. And you can also swipe down to turn the radio down and swipe up to turn the radio up. And you can do that anywhere you want on the face of the radio. That is a new feature exclusive to this radio right now. Now before we go any further digging into this, this is a seven inch screen and like I said, it is capacitive touch, which is the better of the screens. It has a nice shiny feel to it. We'll go back to the main menu. You have your USB input here, so if you are using a thumb drive, this will highlight, otherwise you won't be able to do anything. You can also use the USB for a standard iPod. It'll stay non-responsive until that's plugged in. If you're gonna use it for Android Auto or Apple Apple CarPlay, those logos will appear here. Here's your Apple CarPlay logo. If you press it, it'll go ahead and take you to Apple CarPlay. Now, the latest version of Apple CarPlay allows you to use things like Google Maps as well as Waze. You can either hit the six icon or the Alpine logo to take you back to the main menu. And as you can see, Android Auto will work exactly the same way. Next up is going to be the Sirius XM icon. So if you've added that SVX 300 tuner to it, this will highlight and you can access it. Bluetooth audio. So this actually has Bluetooth audio. If you don't wanna plug in your phone, you can just do Bluetooth audio. It will not do Android Auto or Apple CarPlay wirelessly. It's just straight up Bluetooth audio. Backup camera or front camera. If you'd like to view them while you're driving, if you took the cameras up to accessory power, so they have power when the key is on, you'll be able to view them here. And last but not least is setup. This is gonna be where everything that's hidden or things you wanna to get to is at. First up is sound. Now this radio has an all new sound system built into it to make it as easy or as hard as you want it to be. First thing up is balance and fader. Simply work this area here of the radio and you can go up, down, left, right. And then if you're like, oh, I want it back in the center, Tap the center. Bass and treble. This actually has a bass, mid, and treble adjustable EQ. You can simply tap up or tap down and increase or decrease one of the three. If you've jacked it all up and you're like, I don't like that, you can go ahead and put flat and it'll bring them all back to zero. Next feature is EQ. Here you have six preset settings for your bass, mid, and treble. So let's say you'd like to listen to rock, tap rock, it'll automatically set bass and treble up for that preset. Tap it again, you can change it. And there again, if you don't like it, simply hit flat and it'll flatten it back out. Subwoofer is next. Here you can turn on and off your subwoofer. We'll go ahead and turn it on. You have the subwoofer volume control and you have zero or 180 degrees phase shift for the subwoofer. Next, you see this big one here that says advanced. This is where all the advanced features are in the radio. First one up is going to be crossover. It has crossover for front, rear, and sub. Simply come over here and pick the channel and it'll indicate it here. So right now it is on front. We can pick what frequency we want simply by tapping up or down. Then we can pick our slope here. We have six, 12, 18, or 24 dB slope. If you'll notice right here, we'll go ahead and move that back over into the center of the radio. Then we'll select channel and do the same for rear. Select channel again, our subwoofer will come up. 
Now you'll see the red lines here are the previous channels and the current channel is going to be blue. You can go ahead and press and hold and make it a preset. You can have three different presets for your crossover. Next up is going to be the parametric EQ. This has nine bands of parametric equalization. And as you can see here, it's already adjusted because when we were back here in the EQ, we picked pop. So it's gone ahead and adjusted both the simple bass, mid, and treble, as well as the parametric EQ. What makes a parametric EQ a little different is these nine bands are continuously adjustable. So for example, instead of it just being 63, let's say you wanted it to be 50 or 40, you can do that. And then you can come over here and adjust how narrow or wide, and what that's gonna do is the amount of frequencies it's gonna influence to the left and to the right, wide, narrow. If you put it on, let's say 50, and then you come over here and go wide, that's going to affect a lot of the other frequencies next to it. So like 60, 70, 80, as well as 40 and 30. This makes it a little bit easier to get the sound you're looking for with fewer adjustments because you may want more mid range. You can come over here and select 2K, raise it up a little bit, and then put it on wide, and that will affect the frequencies all around it, which may give you the mid range bump you're looking for. Once you get it the way you like, there again, you have three presets. Press and hold, and it'll make it a preset. You can also hit the flat, which will flatten it out so you can start over. Last but not least is time correction. It has the same basic bottom. You have your flat icon, so if it gets all jacked up, you can simply select flat. You have your time increments, so you have milliseconds, centimeters, and inches. And you can go ahead and put those numbers in here. Then when you have it the way you like it, press and hold and make it a preset. Now what these numbers are corresponding to is where you're sitting in the car. So if you're the driver and you're in the United States or somewhere that drives on the left-hand side of the car, you're gonna go from here to this speaker, from here to that speaker, and here, and here, and here, and put those measurements in. And what it's designed to do is make the sound sound like it's a stereo in your house where the main vocal is coming out of the center of your dash. If you'd like to go back to the simple, Tap it and you're back. Hit the back arrow. Next up is volume. This is where all the controls for let's say phone, talking, and anything that makes sound in the radio is gonna be buried here. So you have your ringer volume, your caller volume, and your microphone sensitivity. So if any one of those isn't working the way you want it to, you can come here and adjust it. So if people are saying you're not that loud, turn that thing up. Select other. This is the beep. Every time you press a button, it goes beep, beep, beep. You can turn it off or you have this second, which I think lowers it just a tad. System. This is where all the back end stuff is gonna be. Silly things like how to set the clock. So you hit adjustment here and you can tap in your time as well as 12 or 24 hour display. Make sure you hit okay when you're done or it won't save it. Dimmer. Now because the orange white wire on this is used for backup, this has a photo sensor built into the front of it which will automatically dim when the car is dark. You can adjust the dimmer level. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. As you can see, the radio got dark. If it's too bright still, we can come over here and turn it down or we can come over here here and turn it up. Off will just keep it the same brightness all the time. Auto is the default. Key illumination. That's the buttons here across the bottom. If you want them brighter, turn it up. If they're kind of annoying, turn them down. If it got set up for the wrong language, this is where you're going to change it. And the last but not least is reset. And we'll come back to that at the last thing we do. So we'll go ahead and hit the back arrow. Connectivity. If you're an Android guy and you don't want anyone to ever use CarPlay on your radio, you could shut it off here. You can also adjust the guidance volume here as well. If you had the Sirius XM connected and you needed to do any backend work, it would be located here. Bluetooth. This is where your four phones are going to be stored. It's telling you, do you want it for music and phone calls or music or phone calls? You can select what you want them to do and you can add or delete up to the four phones. Backup camera settings are located here. So let's say you don't want to use the rear camera as a rear camera. You'd like to use it for something else. You can do that. Now keep in mind, it only has the one trigger, the orange white wire, to trigger it. But if you'd like it to be something other than rear, you can change it to front, side, or other. Default is rear. Secondary camera is located here. And there again, you can decide what you want it to do. Now the trigger for the secondary camera is by touching the camera icon. Now that we've turned it on, I'll go back and show you that in a minute. 
Page two, picture quality adjust. This is nice because sometimes you're tying this into a factory camera and that factory camera is, is well, it's not very good. You can come into adjustment and you can adjust brightness, color, contrast for both the rear and the front camera. Page three is the guidelines. You can turn them off if you don't like them or you have a camera that already has them or you can come here and adjust them. These arrows here across the top are what are gonna allow you to do that. And if you get there again, it all messed up. Alpine has conveniently provide you with a reset information. This is where the firmware information as well as the ability to update the radio is located. This is a new one for Alpine. Though they have allowed you to update the radios in the past, they've never made it this easy to find. So you have your model number here, your system version, your MCU version, as well as the serial number. So you don't have to pull the radio out anymore to get to the serial number. Now if we tap camera, over here you'll notice it says front or rear and we can switch between the two. Now, if we name that camera something other than front, it'll show that here so that you know what you're doing. And that's pretty much all the features that are built into this radio. Now, a couple other things to note, like I said, it's a four volt, six channel preamp output, and it does have internal power. It's 14 by four of actual power, although the sign will say 50 by four. There is an upgrade amplifier available for this that is the same size, and we'll turn this into a double din and give you a real 50 watts by four. That's gonna be the KTA 450. 50 and we'll have a video on how that all attaches to this soon the last thing we're going to show you is the reset feature the reset feature is helpful if you've gone ahead and done what we just did where we went through and we touched everything there was on it and we're like oh my gosh it sounds terrible i don't know what's doing what hit reset this will go ahead and bomb it back to the same way it was when you first got it and opened it up in the box all right guys that's the ilx w650 we hope you enjoyed this fernando if you please all right if you like this video please subscribe share like you know where you find us facebook instagram and here on youtube you guys have a nice day as always we'll see you later next time bye, bye.